We are standing in front of the barn in Hastings Park in Vancouver, British Columbia. And this is the barn into which uh, 8,000 women and children were incarcerated. When we came here in April of 1942, we dragged our suitcases into this barn and our nostrils were hit, hit by this pungent smell of urine and feces. And just immediately we, we felt unclean and helpless, wondering why human beings were being asked to live in such condition. There was a rumor that was brought in from Vancouver saying that all Japanese nationals without citizenship were going to be taken away. So we were dreading that day. We didn't know when. But on, Sep on March the 17th, St. Patrick Day, we saw an RCMP officer drive into our driveway and just literally manhandled my father, just dragged him away from our house and literally threw him onto the back of the pickup truck. And he fell and face planted on the back of the truck. But my father jumped up quickly just to reassure us that he was okay. And then as a seven-year-old child, I saw right in front of my eyes the gun in the holster of the RCMP officer. And so I thought for sure this is what he, this RCMP officer was going to do, was to shoot my father and we would never see him again. My mother was left with five children ages from one to 13. And he, she was given orders to get rid of all animals, like we had 5,000 chickens. And so she had to get rid of those. But the Chinese people in, uh, in Victoria heard what was happening. So they zoomed onto the island and picked up all these chickens at a really, really low price. They sold our property at a, almost a quarter of their value. And I think after they uh, deducted all the cost of this transaction, I think my par parents were given $500. They, they never got to see that $500 because their bank account was frozen and it was only put into their bank account to enable us to pay for our own incarceration. And so when we came here in April of 1942 and was led into this barn, it was, it was so stunning that we as human beings were being herded into this barn where the animals had just vacated and the smell of the urine and feces was so strong. And the longer we stayed here, you know, our hair, our faces, our skin, our clothes were just permeated with the smell of the urine and feces. We were uh, bunked in these metal um, bunk beds. Um, and these bunk beds were packed close together so there was no privacy among strangers. It was so degrading. 
it was so, so degrading to be considered no better than animals. And we didn't even have bathrooms or toilets. Um, if you know the little trough that flows by the, um, <coughs> where the stalls were, that was our toilets. And so, you know, the constant flow of the water and the lime that was sprinkled along there just made everything smell twice as bad. My husband calls it slave labor, and I, I have to agree with that. The only thing missing from this scenario was a whip that the black, um, you know, uh, the black people in the south of uh, America had to suffer. See, it was not just our family, it was 22,000 Japanese Canadians whose civil rights were taken away, who had to go through the sufferings that no group should have had to do it. You know, this was a democracy, but they were doing everything that was opposing the, the laws of democracy. And for people today, you know, this could happen again. Uh, when the Twin Towers fell in the United States, just instantly I thought, now they're going to go after the Muslims. Because, and then they did suffer. You know, th this could happen again. And so everyone has to be vigilant. And I feel that if I, um, educate even one person. I'm hoping that through that one person our stories will be spread so that people will know that democracy can crumble. <laughs>